This is the story of Maria Misaki. Maria Misaki, unorthodox Greek. Growing up outside the city of Athens, Greece, in the suburbs of Aegea Pauskavi, Maria Misaki was raised as an only child in a Greek Orthodox household. Life was quaint. Nothing much ever happened in Aegea Pauskavi. Until the financial crisis of 2008, her life was normal. Even then, life wasn't all that bad. Life here is quiet, peaceful, safe. Uh, there's a lot of, of green. Masaki says, um, I definitely remember realizing that, okay, we don't have as much money anymore, um, but nothing else really changed. And other than that, life here is good. I feel very lucky to, to be in Greece. It, it offers a little bit of everything, I think. Orthodox Mass and this celebration. Twice a year, Misaki would prepare for Mass in celebration of Christmas and Orthodox Easter. Christmas, Misaki describes as overtly Americanized. But it wasn't always that way. Fun fact, the traditional uh, Greek households used to actually decorate little ships instead of Christmas trees, but most families nowadays have a tree. Per Easter, there is a week-long celebration in Greece commemorating Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. During the Holy Week, churches' chandeliers and icon screens are dressed in black and purple ribbons to symbolize the coming morning of Jesus' crucifixion. Eggs are dyed red to signify joy for nature's rebirth and the spiritual regeneration that comes with the resurrection of Jesus. On Monday, Thursday, Greeks bake soreki, a type of bread, and along with it, lembura pulu, Easter cookies. On Good Friday, the ephetoris, a wooden canopied beer representing the tomb of Christ, is decorated with pictures of Jesus and flowers, which is then carried around the city by four men as people proceed behind them, carrying burning candles and chanting psalms. On Holy Saturday, preceding the Midnight Resurrection Mass, Magarista soup, which has been cooking all day, is served. Prior to midnight of Holy Sunday, white candles are lit by the priest with the holy light. Easter Sunday, lamb is skewed and served as they party and listen to folk music. In preparation for Mass, Masaki must remember to dress appropriately, wearing either a skirt or dress below the knee, with no shirt hemlines. It can't be form-fitting or tight, and must come to the mid-calf or ankle. Mass begins at 7.30 a.m., and communion is held every week.
The most holy Eucratus is to fast for the duration of one hour prior to communion, unless for water or medication. He must abstain from marital relations in order to be accepted to partaking in communion. Traditional hymns are chanted by a choir of three or four in smaller churches, such as Misaki's, and in larger churches, there will be bigger choirs, which he finds very beautiful. Prior to the sermon, a verse from the gospel will be chanted, and the priest will say a few words, all of which are said in ancient Greek, a language unfamiliar to the average Greek listener. The transition. Masaki began attending mass regularly this past year and participating in youth group. About a month in, Masaki found she was. I found myself going to the Orthodox, the Orthodox Church every Sunday and not feeling like I understand what's going on or like I'm actually learning anything new about God. So that was definitely the first thing. Um, but at first I was just trying to find an English-speaking Orthodox Church so that they would hopefully translate the Bible to, contempor to a contemporary language. Um, but then I started seeing how political um, a lot of priests and youth groups were to the point where it seemed like the majority of them were pushing a specific political agenda through their... Um, through faith. And that rubbed me the wrong way very much. And that's what eventually made me leave. She became desperate, googling other churches and denominations in her area. She had four options, three of which were Protestant and she knew nothing about. Then Masaki discovered the Evangelical Church of Agia Pascavi, a denomination she knew a little bit more about and felt more comfortable trying out. Her first Sunday service, Masaki brought her mom. Her mom was pretty hesitant in letting her go, but she saw this as her daughter's choice and chose to be accepting of this change in Masaki's life. Greece is a pretty conservative country. Um and a lot of people tie orthodoxy to patriotism in a way. So for a lot of them, not being orthodox is almost like a betrayal to the country. Um, but for most people, I think uh, they just don't really know what Protestantism is, and especially like evangel evangelism, evangelism specifically. So um, I think they just, they're very, suspicious about what it could be, right? They kind of assume that every non-Orthodox church or non-Catholic church maybe is like Jehovah's Witnesses or the Amish or the Later Day Saints or some really um, obscure cult of sorts. Um, so I was, I was more confident that, yes, like this is something that I do feel, uh, you know, is like, is, is right for me. Um, and so when I went there the first time and I was like a bit scared, I didn't know anyone and I was with my mom, I just remember thinking, wow, this is how like Sunday mass should be. Now, this is just obviously my opinion, um, but I remember just feeling right. Like I, I left Sunday mass knowing more things about God. She's arrived. Masaki was finally able to pursue a relationship with God. She learned more than she ever dreamed possible about God in a language that she understood. Her once weary parents became more accepting as Masaki continued to attend evangelical service every Sunday. Family members are still judgmental towards her decision to leave and tend to share horror stories of non-Orthodox churches. One once told her that a non-Orthodox church was caught scamming attendees out of their money. Masaki just ignores them. Masaki has evolved fully and beautifully since walking away from the Greek Orthodox Church. 
She describes her experience as such. Since leaving Orthodoxy, I think I've been less afraid of, of challenging the status quo. Um, and also, I have come to realize that Christians come in all uh, shapes and sizes, I guess, in the sense that in the Orthodox Church, obviously, I only saw Greek people. I only saw people of certain political backgrounds, uh, or rather with, with, cer with very specific political beliefs. And I saw people who had, a, especially the women, had a more specific way of dressing. Um, and I see the evangelical church, at least, you know, the one that I go to as being more diverse in, in every sense. And that just kind of opened my eyes to the fact that Christians don't have to look and act one certain way to be good Christians. You can still be yourself, and I like that. Masaki has hopes that her friends will one day attend church with her. In the meantime, she is continuing to grow her faith with support from her parents who have her back if any family member or friend happens to question her choice. Thank you to our guest, Maria Masaki, for taking the time to conduct this interview with me and to listeners like you. Thank you. Until next time, stay lovely. This is Jasmine Hubbard. Good night.